Welcome back. In the previous video, we added a couple of Cypress tests to our app. So now we have a, a nice suite of end-to-end -end tests and we can use them in our pipeline to get more confidence whenever we are deploying some code into production. In this video, we're going to adjust our pipeline so that we can actually run the E2E tests in a temporary dev environment before we actually deploy them to production. So here is how our pipeline looks now. We install the dependencies. If this passes, we go to check formatting and linting. If this passes, we go to run some unit tests. If this passes, we then build the production website. And then if everything goes well, we deploy things to production. If in any of these stages, the checks fail, or for some reason we have an error, then we're gonna stop the whole pipeline and we're not going to go further. That means if we add some changes which break some unit tests, we will stop at this stage here and we're not gonna build the production website and we'll also not deploy the changes to production. What we will change today is this last step. So instead of building the production website and then directly deploying to production or to the production environment, we're gonna add two intermediary steps here. So I'm just gonna move this to the bottom and I can actually copy paste because it's pretty much the same. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we will, if we manage to successfully build the website, we're gonna deploy this website to dev. Okay, once we deploy this website to the dev environment, this I'm gonna take even a bit lower, we will, once that is successful, we will then run E2E tests. All right, so once we run the E2E tests, and then here I'm gonna be more precise on the dev environment, okay? So once we run this E2E tests, if that is successful, we will finally then deploy the changes to our production environment. So let's have a look again at how it should look like. We have the build production website. If that passes, we are going to deploy this to the dev. So I'm just gonna write here to the dev environment. Once that passes, if everything is successful here, we want to run the E2E tests on the dev environment. And if then, and only then, if the E2E tests pass, we want to deploy everything to production. The good thing here is that we need to do just a few changes to our app because Netlify, not to our app actually, to our CI/CD pipeline, because Netlify allows us to deploy the changes to a what they call a draft environment. We're gonna see how this works right now. So I'm opening my CI CD workflow here under the dot GitHub folder. And if we scroll down here, you see that we have a deploy to Netlify step, right? So in this step here, we are using the, the Netlify CLI and we are running the command deploy. The directory we are deploying is the dist directory. That is the output of the npm run build command. And we are passing the prod flag, which means we are deploying directly to the production environment. So let's add as comments here, the things we would like to do. And the first one is that we would like, so we build the website and then here we deploy um, the website to the dev environment. We then want to run the E2E tests on the dev environment. And then we want to continue deploying to Netlify. What we want to do is first, let's deploy the website to the dev environment. And how am I going to do that? I'm just going to copy paste whatever is in here. All right, so it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that I will remove this dash dash prod here because now Netlify or without this dash dash prod, Netlify will deploy this to a draft environment. Now the question that comes to mind is how do we run the E2E tests on this dev environment? So we need a URL, right? We have a stable URL for our production website that we know we have this. We could add this as an, uh, as, as an environment uh, key here to our E2E tests. Remember, let me just open the script once again here. We can pass the web app URI as an env configuration here to our, to our E2E tests. But for production, that works because we have a, we have a, a um, stable URL. What is the, like, how do we know what is the URL from, our, from this deploy? Since this environment is actually temporary, 
we cannot ensure that it's always going to be the same. So as it turns out, we need within this second step, whenever we are running the E3 tests, we need to get the URL from the first step. Luckily for us, we can actually just jump into how this is implemented because the implementation is quite simple. I just opened here Netlify Actions CLI. And if I come to the entry point here, you will see that at the very bottom, let me just zoom in a little bit. At the very bottom here, there are a bunch of echo statements. And this is basically the syntax used by GitHub Actions to set an output from this file or from this from this step this output will be it, it is accessible at later steps once this step has completed so you see here that if i can somehow reference this netlify url variable or output here in a later step i can get the url that was used that was generated by our deploy command and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So to begin with, we need to, to set an ID and this is just going to be deploy dev. And here I'm gonna say deploy to dev environment. Okay, deploy to dev environment. And the ID is deploy dev, which means that later on I can reference this in, in, a, in a later step and that's what we're gonna do now. So before running the E2E tests, I just want to run a simple name echo dev url and this will run a simple command called echo and here i will just interpolate the uri uh, sorry not uri but the variable i just want to echo the steps dot deploy dev that's how i get a reference to this deploy dev here i'm going to say steps dot deploy dev dot outputs dot and then I'm gonna copy paste from here to prevent any typos. So I just echo the steps.deploydev.outputs.netlify URL. That should print the temporary URL that we get from this deploy, okay? Now the last step is we need to run E2E tests. And to run the E2E tests, we have a nice Cypress action that we can use. So it's called cypress-io forward slash GitHub action at v2. Okay, so basically just use a Cypress action that we can run this in a CI environment. And here I need to pass a couple of things because Remember, if you look in, again, our package.json, not the package lock, but our package.json, you see that I am passing the config file here. So I, am, I don't have a root cypress.json config file. So if I just leave it as it is, like so, it's gonna look for this root cypress.json file here on the left, and it's not gonna find it. So I need to inform where my config file is. That's the first thing. And the second thing is I need to set this web app URI variable. Otherwise, whenever we execute this command here within our Cypress, whenever we try to load a page via the cy.visit cypress.env, it's not gonna find any URI and it's just gonna fail. So we still need to set these two things. First one, and we do those two things with an with key here. And the first one is the config file okay so the config file we know it is within the folder cypress forward slash config forward slash what is it cypress base cypress dash base dot json and also the env here is web app uri and once again we will just interpolate with the results from the deploy dev step okay so here let's have a look if how everything is looking, we have a build production website, we have a deploy to dev environment, we're gonna have an ID here and we will just deploy this without passing the prod flag. Netlify site ID, Netlify auth token are the same as the ones that we are already using to uh, the, the production deploy. Once we finish this, we then are going to just echo the development URL Afterwards, we'll remove this step here. Don't worry about it. That's just for us to visualize how things work. And then we will run the E2E tests on the web app URI that is provided by this deploy step. 
last thing I want to do is I just want to change deploy to Netlify to deploy to prod environment. Just want to be consistent with how I'm naming things in, in the CI um, workflow. All right. And I think that's pretty much it actually. So you see just a couple of lines that we had to change. I can remove this comment here. And what we're gonna do now is we'll just commit this and we will push this to the remote branch. But before we do that, I just realized that um, let's make sure that we are setting the browser here uh, to Chrome. And basically, if we don't set this, it's just gonna run in Electrum. Um, ideally, how this would happen is we would have um, a slightly more complex scenario okay so here we are testing for just for the browser um, just for the chrome browser and that's not really like we are not ensuring that everything is working on firefox or edge or other types of, of browsers i'm not sure if there's any other one. i mean there are but um, anyway the idea here is that within github actions what we would like ideal scenario is we would have what is called a matrix and a matrix is going to receive a bunch of values and then it's going to run these tests for each of the values of the matrix. Now, we are not going to do that because for us at the moment, this is overkill, okay? Like maybe at a later stage and plus like if, when you have a matrix, you run the same job for the different values. You would actually have to kind of for efficiency would split things up here. We would... Um, split into multiple jobs and then only the e2e job would actually have the matrix so that we we don't duplicate executing steps that are not related to the e2e tests so this this is slightly more complex scenario the idea here is if i were to um kind of adjust this this um, um flow here is that we would have um oops something like this so now we are running the e 3 tests on the dev environment, right? But now, so we would push this a little bit lower. Uh, we would have now three tests running in parallel, something like this, okay? Uh, and then here, so let me just, I'm just gonna remove this for the sake of clarity. And I will just connect everything here. This one, this one, and this one, right? So now, what we would have is this would be um, the E3 tests on the dev env and Chrome. Run E3 tests on the dev end and Firefox, for example, and then run the E3 tests on the dev end and Edge. All right. So now, if and only if these three tests pass, so let me just take this slightly up. There you go. Now, if and only if this test pass we would actually go and um, deploy this to production so this is how i our our workflow would look like in case we were to use in this matrix feature actually any ci cd provider like jenkins circle ci github gitlab ci and so on um, they have this possibility of of setting a configuration and then executing executing uh, multiple pipelines or multiple jobs based on this configuration and the values are just varying like one one use case when you want to test for multiple versions of node for example to ensure backwards compatibility um, so th this is pretty much supported everywhere um, for now as i said i think it's overkill and plus as you can see here we run this three times which means we have three times more minutes for the tests um, and yeah, so once again, just a bit too much for the use case. Now, if this was a real production app that we really want to test on different browsers, we would go ahead by all means, we should do something like this. So it's just interesting that you know about this strategy, but I'm not going to implement it here. All right. With that being said, let's see what are the changes you see that we just have on the ci cd here let's add everything with a dash p just so we can visualize the things we are changing nothing fancy nothing much and yes i want to add this and now i want to commit with a feature that i'm going to say add e to e tests to the pipeline all right so that is pretty much everything that we had to do let's have a look i think that there will be no changes on the on the linting or the TypeScript checks because it just changed the CI/CD script. 
Once that is done, we're gonna push and we'll see if that works. If that doesn't work, we're gonna come back and we will see what we need to adjust. Done, it is committed. So I'm just gonna push to origin and I'm gonna make sure that I set this to um, my origin, so the upstream to my origin branch. And then once I push this, I can come back to GitHub and let's have a look if things started running. All right, they started running. They're gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna come back once that is completed. Everything is green, everything is working as expected. Let's then have a look just at the output of these new steps that we added here to our pipeline. You see that we have a, instead of a production or instead of our stable production URL that is just productiveme.netlify.app, we have something that has probably, I would guess that's a commit hash. So this environment here can be accessed. It is still a valid environment, okay? But this is not our production environment. This is actually a temporary dev environment. And again, we are leveraging some of the facilities of Netlify. Uh, if we were to make this using just like raw AWS or any other cloud provider uh, solutions, that would probably be a little bit more complicated or maybe we just need a little bit more setup on our side. But since Netlify gives us this possibility, we will leverage it. So now you see here that we echo the dev URL. So we're just basically printing on the screen what comes out of this job, one or of this step, one of the outputs of this step. And then we are using this to run our E2E tests. You see there's a bunch of, of stuff happening here. And then we have our output. So this is our tests and we are running on Chrome, right? So we're running on Chrome here. That's because we passed the flag. And since all the tests passed, we are then deploying to the production environment. And here we have our productiveme.netlify.app URL. So you see that this is different than our uh, deployment that happened before. Okay, the URL is different. And actually this is the production URL. And since everything passed, we can then close this video. We have now a much more robust setup where we are gonna deploy our changes to an actual environment before running the E2E tests. We'll then run the E2E tests and if everything is successful, only then we touch production. Before we say our goodbyes, let's just remove this step here because we don't really need to echo the URL every time we run the CI. This was just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna add this, I'm gonna, oops, git add dot, git commit, and then I'll just say that's core remove unnecessary echo step. Okay, very straightforward. Um, now we just have the steps that we need in our pipeline. That's, that's much better and that's how we want to be. Final push command and we are done for the day. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.